Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to discuss about calibration of ultrasonic transducers using the IIW block. So this block is known as uh, IIW block. And this IIW stands for uh, International Institute of Welding. So this block uh, is specified by them, this institute. Okay. So if you see the block, it looks uh, something like this. Okay. So let us say you have uh, this kind of angle probes, uh, this you have seen before also and you need to calibrate it for the angle and few more things as we are going to see. And for that, uh, this is the IIW block uh, which is used, okay. So, this is uh, the block. So, this is how it looks like, okay. So, it is a block uh, made of steel and uh, there are few features on uh, this block and with the help of uh, these features, uh, we can uh, calibrate uh, an ultrasonic uh, transducer and the instrument, okay. Uh, if you uh, look at the dimensions, uh, these dimensions are uh, something in this range. The typical dimensions, if you see this length uh, is uh, 200 and you have a notch over here as you could see. which is uh, 2 mm. So, all these dimensions I am writing in terms of millimeter. This radius is uh, 100 mm and the height is uh, also 100. There is a hole over here as you could see in this particular location, okay. So, it is a small uh, hole, the diameter of which is 1.5 millimeter and it is at a distance of uh, 15 mm from the top, okay. And you have a bigger hole uh, over here, okay. So, this is a, a 50 mm uh, diameter hole and from this end it is 5 and from the other side it is 10 mm, okay. And the total length of this whole thing is around 300 mm, okay. So, these are the typical dimensions of this particular block. And now, uh, you could see there are uh, several features on this. The first one, you can see there is a curvature over here this 100 mm radius curvature. Then as I said, there are two holes, one over here which is uh, 1.5 millimeter, okay. And then the other one, a bigger hole, which is a through hole. Uh, this is uh, 50 mm in diameter, okay. So, let us see how uh, this can be used to calibrate uh, angle probes, okay. So, this is an angle probe uh, which is shown over here, you have seen it before also. And you have seen this uh, plastic wedge uh, has been cut over here uh, to provide that particular angle that you need, okay. So, the first thing that you need to know uh, for uh, this kind of uh, angle probes, 
is uh, from this surface where exactly the beam is uh, exiting. So, which exactly is the beam exit point, okay? because the angle has to be calculated with respect to that particular point. Okay? So, there is a surface here and you do not uh, really know as to what exactly is the exit point. So, first thing that you need to do, you need to find out that exit point. Okay? Then only you can talk about the angle because as I said the angle is measured with respect to the index point. Okay? So, this is the beam exit point is also known as the index point and that is the first thing that you need to find out. Okay? So, in order to find the index point, uh, you have to keep the probe on this surface somewhere here and hit this curvature and get an echo from there. Okay? So, uh, this echo uh, from this curvature will be maximum. when the probe is exactly on the center of this curvature. So, when the beam exit point is at the center of this curvature, you get a maximum signal. So, what do you do? You take this probe and then uh, move it on either side like this till you get a maximum signal. Okay? So, the moment you get the maximum signal, you stop there and uh, you mark that point. So, there could be a marking on the block also which is the center of this 100 mm radius. So, that you mark on the probe as the index point or the beam exit point. right? So, in some of the probes uh, you can already see that this index point is being marked okay, right on the probe. Okay? So, if that is there, uh, that will be uh, your uh, index point and you can match it uh, by this particular method. And if it is not there, then you should mark it like how I said, okay, getting a maximum signal from the 100 mm radius and then at that particular point, you mark the index point on the transducer probe. Okay. So, this is the first thing that you do and then you go on to calibrate the angle and other things. Okay. So, let us see how you uh, calibrate the angle using uh, this particular probe. So, in order to uh, calibrate the angle, if you uh, look here on uh, this part, uh, there is a scale uh, graduated on this, on the block. Okay? So, that is uh, the scale for the angles. You can see there are several uh, angles which are marked there like 45 degree and uh, 60 degree and so on. Similarly, on the other side also, uh, on the bottom also you could see, here also you could see along uh, this area, here also you could see there are uh, some angles uh, which are graduated, which are marked uh, on this surface. Okay? So, you, using uh, these uh, angle scales, uh, you would be able to see what exactly is the angle of the ultrasonic beam uh, which is coming out uh, from an angle probe. Okay? So, in order to do that, uh, what you can do? You can keep the probe over here on this place okay? and then get an echo uh, from this uh, 50 mm diameter hole. Okay. So, what you do? You move this uh, probe on either side like this again okay. 
So, let us find out the beam angle from, from this. Yeah, so you as I said you uh, keep the probe on this surface. and get an echo uh, from this uh, 50 mm diameter hole. Okay. And what you do? You move the uh, probe on either side like this and get a maximum signal from the 50 mm diameter hole. So, when you get the maximum signal, uh, you stop it at that point and then see uh, from this scale that the index point of this probe is matching with what angle. Okay. So, that will be the beam angle. Okay. So, this is how you find out the beam angle first. Okay. So, this top surface uh, that you have, if you keep it over here, this can be used for angles in the range of uh, 45 to 60 degree and uh, for higher angles you could uh, keep the uh, probe over here on this surface. Okay. So, this will be uh, 60 to uh, 70 degree because if you have seen the angles, uh, the higher angles are on the lower side and on the top side uh, this is the range. Okay. So, this is how you first uh, get to know the angle. Okay. Once you have established uh, the index point, you get the beam angle. But a beam angle uh, will also uh, have a spread, beam spread. Okay. So, this uh, spread also you need to find out as to how much in the spread in the angle. So, what you do once you establish this uh, uh, angle and the corresponding point for the maximum signal. You uh, move this probe again on, on both the sides uh, from that uh, point of maximum signal. So, first you move for example, towards the left till the signal becomes 0. So, move it on either side till the echo becomes 0. Okay. So, first you move it on the left hand side and then see at what point it is becoming 0. So, note down uh, the angle when it is 0. And the difference of these two angles on either sides will give you the beam spread. Okay. So, this is how you find out uh, the beam angle and the beam spread uh, by using uh, this high w block. Okay. Then uh, there are few other things that you can do by using this block apart from uh, finding the beam angle. So, let us see uh, what are the other useful things that we can do by using uh, this particular block. Uh, one very important aspect as we have discussed uh, before also, particularly for uh, closed surface analysis by ultrasonic testing is uh, the dead zone. So, you should have some idea about uh, the dead zone uh, for a particular transducer which is used uh, for uh, you know closed surface kind of analysis. That again can be uh, found uh, uh, from this block and again you can use this uh, 50 mm diameter hole. So, what you do? You uh, keep the probe at uh, this point first and you know this particular distance is 5 mm. right? So, from this location if you get a clear signal uh, from the uh, 50 mm diameter hole, okay, 
then it will indicate that the dead zone is within 5 mm or less than 5 mm. Because uh, you, you are getting a signal from a 5 mm distance by utilizing that particular probe. So, that will indicate that the dead zone is less than 5 mm. Okay. If you do not get uh, a clear signal uh, from this side, then you can uh, put the probe over here and you know in this case uh, this particular distance is 10 mm. So, if you get a signal from 10 mm distance, but not from 5 mm, then that will indicate that the dead zone is between 5 mm and 10 mm. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if you do not get any signal uh, from this uh, 10 mm distance also, then it will indicate that uh, the dead zone is more than 10 mm. Okay. So, this is how uh, you can uh, get an idea about uh, the dead zone also. Uh, from this IIW block. Okay. I should also tell you at this point, uh, this dead zone, uh, some idea about the dead zone uh, can be obtained uh, from the display as well. From the initial uh, pulse that you have. Okay. So, the initial pulse, uh, let us say if it will it might look like this. Okay. So, the width of this initial pulse will give you an idea of the extent of the dead zone for that particular probe using which you have obtained this initial pulse. Okay. Because within this particular distance, you do not see anything apart from the initial pulse, you do not see any other echo. right? So, that means within this distance, the probe is not receiving uh, any echo at all. It is not able to receive any echo within this distance and that is why that particular distance or the width of this initial pulse will indicate uh, the size of the dead zone for that particular probe. Okay. We will see one more uh, important aspect, one more uh, important thing uh, which can be uh, found again by this IIW block, which is the resolution of any uh, ultrasonic probe. Okay. Resolution means if you have uh, two closely spaced uh, defect uh, lying very close to each other, then uh, you should be able to get uh, two different echoes uh, from these uh, closely spaced uh, defects. Instead of uh, getting a single peak or two peaks uh, massed together into one. Okay. So, if you get uh, two uh, separate echoes from these two defects which are lying very close to each other, then you say that the resolution of that particular probe is good. On the other hand, if you do not get two separate echoes from these two defects, then you say that the resolution is not good. Okay. So, with the help of this particular notch that you have over here, okay, you would be able to find out whether the resolution for that, that particular probe is good or not. Okay. And this we know it is a 2 mm wide uh, notch. So, what you do? You place the probe on this surface here. And then get echoes uh, from this notch uh, from uh, three different points, like first you get an echo uh, from this and then uh, right from the root of uh, the notch like this and then again from the other side of the notch. Okay. 
So, let us call these points as x, y and z. So, you can see these points are very closely lying to each other within 2 mm. Okay. So, if, uh, if the resolution of the probe is good, then uh, you should be able to see uh, 3 different uh, echoes with respect to these 3 points like this. Okay, y, x and z and if your uh, if the resolution is not good then you will see that uh, you are not getting 3 different echoes uh, from these 3 different points. Okay. So, this is how uh, this uh, IIW block is also useful for finding other important parameters like the resolution and also uh, you would be able to get some idea about uh, the sensitivity and uh, things like that. Okay. So, uh, this was about uh, calibrating angle probes by uh, using this IIW block. I have a video of the whole process which was actually carried out in our non-destructive lab and that video will show you how exactly the calibration is done using the IIW block. Please subscribe to see that video and many more exciting videos that might be useful for your career development. Thank you for watching.